Good morning. My name is Tom Yeager. Welcome to worship. I'm speaking to you from the courtyard here, and this is one of my favorite places of church. I, I work right over there. I work at the Mayo Clinic. There's a lot of healing that goes on over there. A lot of healing. We bring a lot of care and hope to patients, not only in our community, but from around the world, both the clinic and the Olmsted Medical Group. And we can really be proud of our community, of the, the care and hope that we provide. I love our church's labyrinth. It's right across from the clinic. It's open to all. And it's a welcoming place for those of us who want the journey within. And our healing starts here. I'm so happy to be a member of this church that opens its arms to the community and all that need healing. So please come and join me and the rest of our congregation on this service for healers. Thank you. Good morning. My name is the Reverend Kitty Burbo, and I am a retired Mayo Clinic chaplain. Happy to be here at Christ United Methodist with you this morning. And my name is Elizabeth McCauley. I'm lead pastor at Christ United Methodist Church, which is where we find ourselves. This morning, we are celebrating uh, the powerful need we have to say thank you to the healers in our community, uh, all who have conspired uh, to bring us through this time of pandemic, whether it's stocking grocery shelves or washing floors or staying home with kids or teaching uh, long distance or whatever it is, uh, we just want to say thank you. So that's what this service is about. And uh, what we invite you to do is share it. Would you like this service, please? Uh, send us a comment in the line on your Facebook page just to say, here we are. And perhaps you'd like to say who it is you give thanks for on this day. Someone who helped you come through and is continuing to help you come through a challenging time. So will you join us, please, as we enter into this call to this worship service? Peace and healing to all who gather this day. Together, we are called to weave a tapestry of hope, of courage, surrender, brokenness, and most of all, faith. With one heart made of many sinewy strands of color and beliefs, we create a blanket of praise to our God. Come into the light of love. Come, you whose wholeness feels broken by hours of labored intensive care. Come, you whose eyes are blurred by tears of compassion and a longing for sleep. You praise the Holy One, caring for strangers who often become family. Come, you whose backs are weary with bending, whose hands are red from scrubbing, from preparing food for masses, whose hearts are chapped by the raw emotions brought on by exhausted hope. Your God comes to heal you and feels the praise and pain of your labors. Come, you who hold the tension between parent and profession, you seek to heal the wails of children and adults who would rather make change than buckle under it. God receives your courage and frustration and offers fortified strength. Come, you whose faith in the holy is strong enough to ask, where are you, God, in the wake of unspeakable pain? God clears your ears and hearts 
and God offers a renewed covenant. I will never abandon you, never. And come, you prayers and caregivers of our world, you who are generous enough to stand up to the tragic gaps in life and gently grip our hands with love. God is resilient in your mercy and unending faithfulness. You are the looms on which God's tapestry of hope and healing are thread. So we invite you, come, come into, into the, the light, light people, people of, of the, the living God. God. Lay down your burdens, rise up to hope. hope. Let, Let us praise our, our living God. God. Let us enter into worship. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Beth Joyner, 
the director of the adult choir here at Christ United Methodist Church and a chaplain at Mayo Clinic Hospitals. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we are gathered today from many backgrounds and experiences, united as your people, celebrating the power of healing through the skill of medicine, through the loyalty of service, through the tender touch, through the constancy of forgiveness. May we always be aware of the healing power we each possess through our words of grace and compassion, words that build bridges of reconciliation, words that stand for justice and inclusiveness, words of support and encouragement. May we offer the best of ourselves through hearts filled with gratitude and appreciation. Bring us together on common ground of our love for you, O divine creator of all there is. Bless our time together. We pray in the name of the one who heals all and forgives. Amen. Good morning. Today we are recognizing, celebrating, and giving thanks to all the healers and helpers in our community. People that help us heal physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. I have two grown up children. Their names are Johanna and William. And when they were little, one of their favorite games was doctor office. We had a medical kit like this. How many of you had this in your home or currently have it. Well, this game would consist of me or their dad lying on the couch while they examined us. They would listen to our heart. They would take our blood pressure, check our temperature, and then the dreaded shot. This game provided endless hours of entertainment for them and required a lot of patience from Bill and I. Well, their interest in medicine did not last. Neither one of them are in the medical field today, but they are healers and helpers. They are both caring, compassionate adults that care about their family, friends, and all human beings. I know they have healed my broken heart before and helped me when I needed help. It doesn't matter how old you are or what your talents are, we are all healers and helpers in this world in our own special way. Let's end in prayer. Dear God, thank you for your son Jesus who taught us about the healing power of community, love, and prayer. Amen. This is a Misha Berach prayer asking for God's blessing. Misha Berach means may the one who blessed. Enriched by our sense of wholeness, let, our let us turn our thoughts to those who are torn, those who face illness, challenge, uncertainty, despair. Alas, of course, so many in our world and on so many fronts. Let us think as well of those who are lost for having lost their identities or their names, those whose lives have been reduced to being part of statistics or numbers that endlessly soar. Let us think of those who struggle to find themselves in these times. We begin with a prayer for the vaccination. With gratitude and thanksgiving to the healer of broken hearts and restorer of broken bones, appreciation and thanks for inspiring the medical teams and scientists, granting them the wisdom, knowledge, and expertise to prepare this vaccine for all of us. May it be your will that with my vaccination, I will be granted the ability to heal and keep safe humankind and be granted the privilege to fulfill the mitzvah of one who saves a life. Blessed are you, healer of all who are sick. If there is someone about whom you are thinking, say that name out loud or whisper it to the universe and allow the name to be carried to healing. I know that everyone joins me in asking for God to be a healing presence in the lives of those who struggle and suffer, and most especially all those who serve and heal. 
all those who are feeling overwhelmed and anxious, all those who hold only a spark of hope in their hearts for themselves or for their loved ones. The traditional Hebrew prayer for blessing, Mishaberach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak V'Yaakov, Mishaberach Imotenu Sarah Rivka Leah V'Rachel. May the God who accompanied our ancestors accompany us on this unfolding journey. The Mishaberach for those serving others. While it is true we are humbled by the magnitude of what is rising up around us, we are not dwarfed by it. Goodness is rising around us on every turn, and tales of heroic deeds abound. Let us turn our thoughts to those who struggle and those who serve. We pause as we celebrate those in many walks of life who are offering their commitment to humanity through unbridled acts of love, and there are among them those who suffer for their efforts and the blessing for knowing that we are not alone. Baruch atah Adonai, mikor nefesh kochai, mikor habracha. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of all being, fountain of blessing, who has created us to know that we are not alone. And let us say, Amen. Uh, my name is Fedumo Hersi, and I work for the Rochester Public Schools, and uh, I was invited today to be part of this uh, interfaith uh, event that's going on by uh, Jody Peterson, uh, one of my colleagues that I've been working with from Riverside, and I'm here today just to uh, just share, you know, in our religion, the Quran, 
uh, first is that uh, that talks about you know the healing and what we do as uh, Muslims and how do we uh, go from healing. So I'll be going to share this, okay? So in the Islamic holy uh, book called the Quran, there are multiple verses that pertains to hardship or healing and God's power. The first that I have selected regards the general topic of healing, and this is what it says. Allahumma rabban nas athibil ba'as washfi anta shafi la shifa illa shifa'uka shifa'an la yuqaddiru saqman. Uh, this first uh, translates to, oh Allah, which means, oh God, Lord of mankind, do away with my suffering. Heal me as you are the only healer and there is no cure except that of yours. It is that which leaves no element behind. This means that with whatever you are uh, facing, whether that is sickness, pain, or any kind of hardship to turn to and put faith in God, because he is the true healer, and whatever he is healing or easing, he will not leave that person in suffer. With each hardship, God brings ease, and by turning to him, he will always be by your side. And I just wanted to share that, you know, there's a lot of different uh, verses within the Quran that when people are faced with hardship, with suffering, with any kind of going on that we go and read, and uh, you can go multiple ways, uh, but we always turn to faith and uh, turn our uh, patience to God. And we believe in God that, uh, you know, uh, that whatever that's going on, that he can heal you. Uh, and it may not just come easy, but it may take a long time. And we believe in the power of healing, the power of faith, the power of prayer within the Quran. And I am really happy to share with that with you today. And I hope that uh, for all of us uh, that are going through suffering, uh, people who are caring for others who are going through suffering, that we all turn to God and put our faith and our patience in Allah, in God's hands, and all suffering will be eased. Thank you.
Well, good morning, everyone. I thought I'd start by explaining why I'm here. When we were planning the healing service, I suggested that we talk about the scripture where Jesus is criticized for healing on the Sabbath. And Elizabeth said, well, that's a wonderful idea. Why don't you talk about it? So here I am. And I found out as I was reading about it that this is a very interesting story. In fact, it's one of the few stories that appears in all four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, and in fact, Luke tells a story of Jesus being criticized for healing on the Sabbath three separate times. So the writers of Jesus' era thought that this uh, story was very important. So why would Jesus be criticized for healing on the Sabbath? Well, uh, healing is work. Elizabeth and Cooper and Nancy are wonderful spiritual healers, but they will tell you it's work. And nurses and doctors, we can tell you that physical healing is also work. So the question is, can you work on the Sabbath? What's the problem with that? Well, if we turn to the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment says, remember the Sabbath day, Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. So the scripture is pretty clear that you should not work on the Sabbath. Healing is work, so we have a problem. So let's listen to Mark's version of this story. Jesus returned to the synagogue. A man with a withered hand was there. Wanting to bring charges against Jesus, they, the legal experts, were watching Jesus closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. He said to the man with the withered hand, step up where people can see you. And then he said to the legal experts, is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? to save life or to kill, but they said nothing. Looking around at them with anger, deeply grieved at their unyielding hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he did, and his hand was made healthy. Now Jesus did not argue that healing was not work. He knew it was work. He used a different set of arguments. In Luke, Jesus says to them, suppose your child or your ox fell into a ditch on the Sabbath day, wouldn't you immediately pull it out? So healing is work, but there are times when it's important. Now, if we read these stories as something that took place 2,000 years ago, and is irrelevant to us today, we really miss the point. It's true we cannot heal a withered hand or cure someone who's been blind since birth as Jesus does on the Sabbath in the book of John. But this story is very relevant to us. The first point that we miss is if we think only the legal experts have unyielding hearts. It's not just those people. All of us have unyielding hearts at times. For me, it's often before or during the first visit when a patient has multiple complaints for which I seemingly have nothing to offer. Or it could be like the time I saw a patient for the first time. He spent most of the time with me complaining about all his previous doctors and how they'd misdiagnosed him and his family. And I have to say, I had a fairly unyielding heart <laughs> Uh, toward him. But some years later, I said to him, it must have been pretty hard when your mother died when you were six years old. He said to me, not as hard as when my father died when I was 12. I learned how it was that the Catholic Church saved him. You know, priests are often criticized these days, but the priests saved this man. He went on to build a very successful business, and I learned over time how he is one of the 
most generous givers in the state of Minnesota, and one of the patients that I admire above all. I find that the more I get to know a person, the more my unyielding heart melts, and I'm the one that's healed. When we take time to get to know immigrants, people with different religions, or people with different political beliefs, our hearts become less unyielding, and healing can begin. The second point is even more important, and we often miss it because we think, well, that's just, we can't heal people who have been blind since birth. Those are miracles. They don't relate to us. We are all healers, and we are all called to heal. Some healing requires an RN or an MD, but a degree is not necessary to help a person feel better about themselves. When we help a person feel better about themselves, we're helping them see themselves in a new light. As the man in John who is blind says, and it's quoted in Amazing Grace, I don't know if Jesus is a sinner. All I know is that I once was blind, and now I see. We are all able to help cure people's blindness, and it is indeed a miracle. These stories are not about us and them. They're about us and us. We are divided people. Sometimes our hearts are unyielding. Sometimes we're healing. What this story says is that God grieves when our hearts are unyielding, and that God calls us to heal all our brothers and sisters. Amen. Good morning. It is now our opportunity to give graciously to God in thanks for all of God's healing mercy. We are taking a special offering today for the National Association of Mental Illness to support the emotional health of persons in our community and beyond. So if you would like to give a special gift to NAMI, we invite you to either follow the instructions for an online gift, or if you are mailing in your gift and you're writing a check, just put N-A-M-I in the corner of the check, and we will make sure that that goes to this special offering today. Let us be in a time of offering. See you. 
On this day, we have paused as one people to give thanks for all those in our community, many from our own congregation who have spent countless hours in the last year taking care of the multitudes who have contracted COVID-19. Some have stood with those who have died without their loved ones at their sides. Others have run lab tests for thousands of people. Researchers have looked for vaccines and others have administered them by the thousands. And yet others, others of you, have cleaned rooms and stocked grocery shelves. And some of you have shopped for the hundreds who did not dare expose themselves by even going to buy food. To all of you, we say thank you, and we invite you to receive this blessing. To those of you who have labored to keep nursing homes, hospital rooms, doctor's offices, grocery stores, schools and child care centers clean and virus free, we bless you for you have been on the front line our first line of defense against COVID-19. So may you carry this blessing and our thanks back to those with whom you labor. To those of you who have served humanity as laboratory technicians, who first figured out how to test for this virus, and then ramped up to test thousands day after day after day so that those with COVID-19 could be quarantined and others could go back to work. May the God who gave you active minds and dedicated hearts bless you. And our thanks go to those with whom you labor as well. To those in our midst and in this community who are physicians, physicians' assistants, you who have dedicated your lives to bringing healing to your patients, who work long hours day after day to bring physical wholeness during a pandemic in which sometimes the best that could be has been to make your patients comfortable as their lives slipped away. This has been a turbulent time and distressing for so many of you who have dedicated your lives to giving life. So may you carry this blessing and our gratitude to your colleagues and to your families who have sacrificed so much in this last year so that you might bring healing to all of those in your care. And especially may your families hold on and may you all have compassion for one another and energy to reconnect in the months ahead. Hear these words of thanks, hear these words and know that we appreciate you. To those of you who are nurses and CNAs and nurses' aides, to those of you whose hands-on care, hour after hour, wearing all manner of PPE in the hope that at least you will not fall ill to that which you use your gifted hands to heal. To you, who have often had to say to family members, no, I'm sorry, but you cannot be in the room at this time. I will be here with your loved one and I will hold the phone so that you may speak your goodbyes to them over the phone. To many other retired medical staff 
who have been called back into service as vaccines, as vaccinators, so that eventually life can return to what will undoubtedly be a new normal. May you take our blessing with you this day to share with your many colleagues who have sacrificed so much in this pandemic as this pandemic has ground on and on. And to those of you in the food industry, those of you in the meat and food packaging plants, to those of you who stock our grocery shelves, and to those who daily come to the hospitals to cook for patients and staff, we remember that Jesus fed the 5,000 on the hillside one day beside the Sea of Galilee. And we thank God for all of those of you who, like Jesus, feed the hungry and give sustenance to all. We especially give thanks to those in our own congregation who have continued to feed the hungry every Saturday despite many, many challenges that might have caused others to give up. And we thank, thank you all who have worked in conditions in the packaging plants that have led to contracting COVID-19 and some even dying. We pray for your families, for your friends, that they might know God's peace. And may you, who like Jesus fed the multitudes, carry this blessing and our deep heartfelt thanks to those of your colleagues. To hospital administrators and to medical ethicists, to those who have had to make hard decisions about how to prepare for the coming of COVID-19 and how to keep staff and patient, patients and families alike safe in the midst of the unknown. To you who have held government positions, who have also carried the weight of shutting the economy down and shutting schools down and telling businesses they had to close for a while. We give God thanks for you for your hours of deliberations, for the wisdom of those who have made turns in direction on a moment's notice when new information and new insights have come. We thank God for you. So may you carry the blessings from our congregation to all who have stood in the gap to keep our hospitals, our clinics, our schools, our churches, and our businesses safe. And to you, finally, who are first responders and paramedics, EMTs, emergency department staff, may you know our deepest appreciation for being there as so many realized that what seemed like a trivial cough turned into a life-threatening inability to breathe. May you carry our blessings and our deep gratitude to all of your colleagues for the thousands you have given hope to in their own darkest hours. And to you who have been caregivers, for those who have had COVID-19 in your own homes or in nursing homes where so many have died. May you be blessed for the care you have shown. Hear these words of thanks from those who have gathered here this day. And to the teachers in our midst, you who have had to learn ever new ways to teach our children to you who have zoomed into our homes to provide care for our young ones, and to those in the hospital setting who teach med students who have zoomed into their, their homes as well, 
May you know the blessings of God for being so amazingly flexible and for continuing to love our children and our students through this storm. And to the child care workers, like the ones who work at Thrive, who continue to care for the youngest among us at considerable risk to ourselves, we thank you for your constancy and your love. May you continue to be filled with love and compassion for those in your care, for those you teach, and may you carry this blessing to your colleagues. And finally, to those who are the spiritual leaders, to pastors, to priests, to imams, to rabbis and ch chaplains, to all of you who have dared to lift even one prayer to our creator and the giver of life, we thank you. For God has called all of us in one way or another to bring healing to our world. So may you go forth from this place and carry the blessings that you have received far and wide. For our God is a God who seeks to bring wholeness to all of those who are broken, to all of those where life is in peril, and who seeks to bring healing where there is injury. We thank you, and we bid you share these blessings with others. Amen. So we give thanks. We cannot share our gratitude enough for the healers in our midst, for the ways that we have knelt at each other's feet and offered compassion and care. So may you go from this time with the wisdom of the hymn sounding in your soul. Sometimes we have to let other people be our servants too, as the song says. So we give and we receive and we are all made whole. Thanks be to God.
Amen.